Hello, I am Dr. Saurav Patwardhan from Nandadeep Eye Hospital, Sangli, India and FACO Training Center. In this video, I will be talking about fluid deviation and how is it happening? Let's think about it. It is commoner than you think. When we start doing FACO, we are pushing lot of fluid in the anterior chamber to keep the anterior chamber maintained. But what happens in certain cases such as those with zonular weakness, small or big eyes and particularly if you are using very high bottle height or high IOP during FACO, this fluid is going to seep through these weak zonules or zonular defects and it will pass into the potential space between the posterior capsule and antihyloid. Even if it is not detached before, sometimes during surgery this particular space may be created because of the antihyloidal detachment. In the fluid will keep on accumulating in this Berger space and subsequently there will be anterior push of the posterior capsule also because there is fluid from on both sides of the posterior capsule and it is no longer supported by the anterior hyloid this posterior capsule becomes more redundant and there will be undulating posterior capsule you can also see some particulate matter or debris in the Berger space which indicates that antihyloid has now separated from the posterior capsule so it is important to detect the fluid deviation at this stage you can use reduced bottle height, also reduce the vacuum and flow rate so that the anterior chamber fluidics become more stable and use protective viscoelastic and perform very careful slightly anterior plane FACO to avoid rupture of the posterior capsule. At this point, the IOP is still normal. But if it goes undetected and surgery is continued with high bottle height for longer time, the fluid will accumulate further and this is going to push the posterior capsule further forward it will push the iris forward and it will result in acute intraoperative rock hard eye syndrome because of the raised intraocular pressure now the anterior chamber becomes really really shallow and there is imminent danger of posterior capsular rupture also doing any manuals in the anterior chamber at this point becomes very tough even trying to implant the IOL if you have finished the surgery becomes very tough because it will push against the posterior capsule may lead to posterior capsule rupture at this point we can treat it by these options option one is aspiration of this retro capsular fluid using 24 gauge needle and this was quite commonly performed by ophthalmologists. The only issue with this technique is that you have to go into the Berger space to remove the fluid. But many times this 24 gauge needle may start pulling the vitreous and may lead to vitroretinal problems. But aspirating the retrolenticular fluid will take care of the fluid deviation. The option two is cutting the vitreous with vitrectomy pro through pars planar route so we are doing basically anti vitrectomy to reduce the vitreous volume and we are also trying to cut the anterior hyloid thus removing the fluid from the burger space and taking care of the fluid deviation this will lead to further deepening of the anterior chamber and reduction of the intraocular pressure but sometimes it may lead to supracoroidal hemorrhage in patients who are prone the third option which i would recommend for all beginners and inexperienced surgeon is to stop the procedure i think it is the safest option so just close the incision do not try to do any maneuvers give patient iv mannitol and oral acetazolamide to reduce the intraocular pressure once the fluid deviation settles down ac is deep again you can proceed with the surgery either on the same day or next day and you can do very safe surgery later so for fluid deviation 
we must remember few things to avoid it avoid high iop for prolonged period so it is better to use a mechanized pole for gravity based machine or use iop controlled machine so that you can perform the procedure at lower iop not all steps of the feco require high iop in case of fluid deviation develops and it causes shallow sc and positive vitreous pressure you can close the case and operate next day after controlling the intraocular pressure this is the safest way to deal with fluid deviation other option is of course to do pass vena limited anti vitrectomy to reduce the vitreous pressure and complete the case but there is always a chance of supracoroidal hemorrhage in patients who are prone for that so now let's have a look at one case where i faced fluid deviation i noticed during the procedure that the anterior chamber was becoming progressively shallow and the pieces were being pushed anteriorly so i stopped and i replenished the ovd in the anterior chamber pushing the pieces back as possible but still i can find that the pieces are still anterior so i reduced the vacuum to have a safer anterior chamber and continued with feco emulsification as i noticed still the bulge was there i reduced the vacuum further and further to have stable anterior chamber but i could clearly see that the posterior capsule was clearly bulging forward so i reduced the vacuum further to minimum and as you can clearly see here for the last small piece even with the lowest vacuum there was some anti movement of the posterior capsule so you can watch here again so even with very minimal vacuum because there was fluid deviation which was pushing the posterior capsule anteriorly and also making the posterior capsule more redundant there could be fluctuation seen and because i was careful i avoided posterior capsular rupture here i proceeded with very careful cortical aspiration here we must realize that we should not be holding the posterior capsule any time so always keep the opening of the probe as anterior as possible and be very watchful when you are pulling out the cortex otherwise you may by mistake catch hold of the posterior capsule you can see the redundancy in the posterior capsule and anterior bulge you can watch the lines on the posterior capsule indicating the forward bulge and movement of the posterior capsule uh, whenever vacuum is applied so you have to be very very watchful all throughout the cortex aspiration and you can also see few debris which are actually behind the posterior capsule in the bulge space clearly indicating that there is anterohyoidal separation and fluid accumulation in the bulge space very carefully i removed the subincisional cortex as well and here i have reduced the vacuum to just 10 mm and still you can see it caught hold of the posterior capsule when i tried to polish the capsule so i decided to go ahead with the il implantation fortunately in this case the intraocular pressure was still normal and i could implant the il though there was some anterior bulge still present and i closed the case but in this case there was high likelihood that iop may rise if the fluid deviation continues so it is important that during each surgery you have to be watchful for the signs and uh, change the fluidics accordingly so just to summarize avoid high iop for prolonged period to reduce the chances of fluid deviation use mechanized pole for gravity based machine so that you can do few steps of the surgery at low iop or use the iop control systems and use low iop parameters in case fluid deviation develops during the surgery shallow ac and positive vitreous pressure is seen you can close the case if it is too high and then you can operate the next day after controlling the iop of course there is a option of removing this fluid deviation by doing pass vena anterior vitrectomy 
but of course there is a risk of uh, supracoroidal hemorrhage in case the eyes are prone for that so you have to keep that in your mind thank you so much for watching this video there are many more videos on my youtube channel so do subscribe to my youtube channel also i have a very excellent website fakotraining.org.in and on this website you can see whole list of videos you can also submit your videos so that we can review and publish your videos on this website thank you so much for listening